Hey there, my colorful critters and rainbow rebels. Today we are talking about color in Resolume Wire. The color type was introduced in the Resolume 7.20 update. It changed how colors work in Wire and added additional color related notes. So we thought this would be the best time to have a little chat about colors. Let's start at the beginning. What are colors in the context of computer graphics? Your program, in our case our patches, produce some amazing graphics. The color value of each pixel is sent to your graphics card, which in turn tells your monitor where to display each pixel. In computer graphics we use something called an additive color model. This means that colors are added together to create other colors. The additive RGBA model is the most commonly used and is the one that Wire uses. When we add pure red, green and blue together, we get white. The additive system makes sense when you think about it. The LEDs in your monitor produce light and there is no such thing as black light, except when raving at a Psytrance party. With our basic knowledge covered, how do we use color in a wire? The color data type in wire contains all information about a color. This includes information like the RGBA values mentioned before. The same data is also available as hue, brightness and saturation. To illustrate this, I will take the color data from this color and unpack it. We can see the separate elements of each color. Each element or channel is represented by a value between 0 and 1. This is called a normalized value. This might be different from graphic applications that you are used to. For example, Adobe's Photoshop's color channels run from 0 to 255. Both are valid ways to represent color data. You might be already familiar with the concept of RGB colors, colors constructed from red, green and blue values. But what's up with the A? The A is the alpha channel and describes how opaque or transparent the color will be. A color with an alpha value of 0 will be fully transparent. A color with an alpha value of 1 will be fully opaque. And all the blending happens somewhere in the middle. The introduction of the color type is a big change for older wire users. Before 7.20, colors used to be of the float 4 type, each element of a float 4 representing R, G, B and A. Let's get the important part out of the way. You don't need to worry about your older patches not working anymore. The float 4 type can still be converted to colors and vice versa. If any conversions are needed in your older patch, they will be done by wire automatically. The most common way to create a color is through the color and color in nodes. The color node produces a color type. This can be seen when hovering over the outlet. You can change the color by clicking on the little box and opening the color picker. In the color picker you can construct your colors out of RGBA values by playing with the sliders. Alternatively you can use the hue, saturation and brightness sliders. And another option is to use the palette at the bottom. The color picker has some cool little features up its sleeve. When you make a color, Wire will calculate a palette of analogous, complementary, monochromatic and split complementary colors for you. These palettes are also known as color schemes and are useful for creating colors that work together in harmony. At the top of the color picker we find the option to enter or copy hexadecimal color values. This is something we'll get back to later in the tutorial. And finally we see a little eyedropper tool that will let you pick colors from your screen. This works even outside of wire which can be very handy if you want to pick some colors from a palette generation site like Adobe Color Wheel, Coolers or Low Spec. Which perfectly segues into the next section. What if you want more than a single color? The color node can be instantiated through the node panel. Changing the color will change the color of each instance. We can see this when we hover over the outlet of the color node. Holding down the command button on Mac or the control button on Windows and clicking the color box will open up this little widget where I can select colors per instance. Let's switch to a patch where I can demonstrate this in practice. In this example I want to colorize the output of the texture in node using the colorize node. First I will add a colorize node and connect the texture in to it. In the node panel I will set the colorize node to the palette mode. 
When I hover over the palette inlet, we can see that it wants a texture 2D RGBA signal. So let's give it that. I will create a color node and in the node panel, I will set it to five instances. Now I'll open up my browser and use Cooler to create a nice palette. This should work. I'll hold down the command button and click on the color node to edit the individual instances. Using the eyedropper, we'll move between Wire and the web browser to collect our palette. Now that we have our collection of colors, we need to convert the colors into a texture in order for the colorize node to work with it. For this, I'll create the texture from data node. This node will create a texture from the colors we give it. Now we can hook up the output to the palette inlet and we have ourselves a colorized test card. Now that we have covered the color node, we can have a look at the color in node. The color in node is the input variant of the color node. This means it will show up in both the dashboard panel and in the arena or avenue interface. I have made this patch to demonstrate the color in node. There is a color in node to control the color of the shapes. I can control it from the dashboard. Next, I'll save this patch as a source. In Arena, we can see that the parameter is here too, allowing us to change the color here. Note that you can have as many color in nodes as you want, and you can also rename them for easier interface design. In this example, I have taken our previous five color palette example and updated it to run with color in nodes. And this is how it looks in Resolume Arena. In the node panel of the color in node, you will spot the option to add options count. This will allow you to create button or drop down menu with a preset amount of colors. You choose whether you want a drop down menu or buttons. But if there are too many buttons to fit the UI, Wire will switch to a drop down menu either way. Time for some new nodes. The color from RGB and the color from HSB nodes are new to the 7.20 update and can be used as an alternative to the color and color in nodes. The big advantages these nodes have is that the color channels can be modulated by external sources like oscillators or envelopes. In this example, I am using three Perlin noise nodes to modulate the RGB channels of the color from RGB node. Each Perlin noise node has a different frequency and instance count. The texture from data node is used to convert the colors into a texture. In this second example, we are getting a little bit more interactive. When the movement speed of the shape is increased, so is its hue, creating a clear visual relationship between speed and color. Hexadecimal color codes can be used in the string type and converted to the color type. This is a very niche application as the color picker also supports this, but for completeness sake, here it is. I'm taking the hex code from Adobe Color Picker copy and paste it into a string node, connect the string node to a color node, and then the color node to a texture from data node so we can see the result. Note that when the input string is not a valid hex color, that the color node will switch to the default. Yeah, that doesn't work. The linear node set to color mode can be used to create a collection of colors that are interpolated between the min and max colors. This allows you to create color gradients, like this one. For older wire users, we have retired the gradient palette node as the linear node now functions identically. Again, your older patches will be automatically updated. Now for a little bonus tip. Nodes like expand and reverse can be cleverly used to mirror or grow collections of colors like in this example. Here I am using expand in ping pong mode to mirror my collection. And in this example, I am using the reverse node to reverse my collection. Next, I am using a join node to combine the original gradient and the reverse collection together. This creates a nice reverse mirror effect. In this final linear example, I have combined the previous techniques to create a weird and wonderful palette. I've used a slide node to move the gradient around and some UV offset and oscillators to create a very basic video synth patch. 
Expanding on the previous topic, we've got the analogous and complementary color nodes. They will create a palette based on the input color using traditional color theory schemes. You can set the amount of colors and the range of the colors. Let's create a quick little patch to test these nodes, shall we? In this patch, I'll create a circle of circles using the circle shape and the circle pattern node. The color in node is used as a base color and the analogous color node will provide the rest of the palette. Now for a quick trick. I'll add the size node from the circle pattern to the analogous color node. So now when I add more circles, I'll expand the gradient too. In this more elaborate patch, I am using the complementary color node to quickly generate a single color, the one complementary to the base color. As I change the hue of the base color, the relationship between the colors stays consistent, which can be very important for minimal visuals like this one. Let's talk about effects. Video effects like hue rotation, grayscale, bright contrast and saturation can also be used in conjunction with the color type. In this example, I am using the U rotation node to U shift this collection of colors. All right, time to sow some chaos in this overly structured tutorial. We have learned that the RGBA channels of a color are values between zero and one. We can use this information to create a selection of random colors. This can be done in a couple of ways. Here we have a random node creating a float four which I will plug into a color node to convert the float4 type into a color type. Alternatively, I can use the color from HSB or color from RGB nodes. Here I use a random node to create a float3, giving me manual control over the alpha. Expanding on this concept, here I have instantiated the random node, and now we're getting a collection of random colors. Another application of this might be to create variation on a given color. In this example, I've got a color in node going into a U rotate node. The random node is used to create small adjustment to the color's U. Here I have reused the same patch, but the randomization is applied to the brightness of the color. Instead of using the bright contrast effect, we can also do it manually. This is done by unpacking the color and adding the random value to the brightness channel. The advantage here is that we can use the sort and read nodes to sort the colors based on the brightness now. And one final randomization trick can be done with the shuffle node. By passing in a collection of colors, in this example from the complementary colors node, we can randomize the order of colors. And that covers the basics of color in Resolume Wire. There are more advanced topics regarding color. You can do actual math and logic with colors. You can compare and combine colors. And using the new sample texture node, you can retrieve color data from a texture. But this is all a little bit beyond the scope of this basic tutorial. So we will be back covering those topics at a later date. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the future.